One year ago, I hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. How did I celebrate? By saying this. If I don't hit a million subscribers exactly a year from today, December 31st, 2023, I will delete Ski Mask Duets. I'll shut it down. I'll delete everything. Now here we are one year later, and unfortunately, I failed. But what went wrong? Arak, Beluga, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, the list goes on. What do all of these big YouTubers have in common? They all hit 1 million subscribers in well under a year. Some of them have actually gained 1 million subscribers in a single month. Knowing this information, I thought to myself, if these people have done it, then there's clearly a way to do it. All I needed to know is that it's possible and I'm good. I can do it too. Or at least, I thought I could. At the beginning of the year, I literally came out swinging. This was the best month analytics-wise in my entire channel history. I produced some of the best videos ever, starting with still to this day, my favorite video I've ever made on this channel, 30 Days of Ice Baths. Although it didn't blow up, it was a masterpiece to me. I also had some insane luck with my 5 tips to get shredded by summer video, which is my most viewed video to this day. Moving forward, I had another flop as you could call it, with my video for skinny guys who want to gain weight, but we bounced back with my Omegle Classic sleeper build on Omegle. This was a trend-setting video and definitely showed me that I was on the right path as a creator. I also started what I thought would end up being an extremely viral challenge, duetting Mr. Beast until he works out with me. The plan was that after enough days, he would eventually notice the challenge and we would work out, especially since he was doing his own weight loss challenge at the time. I was trying to extend my reach as far as possible and I even showed face at the Zoo Culture Grand Opening to network with a lot of other creators. Needless to say, I think I started off the challenge the right way. After a super strong first month of the year, I followed it up with yet another great month. I kept my videos indoors since those performed better, and tried to double down on what was working with videos like Watch If You're Fat and Ultimate Guide to Fat Loss. I did experiment and upload another flop, 7 Things I Wish I Knew When I Started Lifting, and honestly, the numbers started getting in my head since I was on a timer. I followed it up with one of my best videos to this date, 30 Days of No Dopamine. This was not only beneficial to me and others, but it was fun to film and I got to make money from it. Sounds like the ultimate combo, right? Well it was, and since I was determined to scale my channel rapidly, I reinvested literally everything I made and took the Mr. Beast approach. I hired new editors, thumbnail artists, short form editors, and I even paid for a very expensive consultation with none other than the legendary Daryl Eves, which cost $1,000. This consultation was so useful, I paid another $6,000 to get into his private YouTube mastermind shortly after, and I even went to his convention VidSum in October which cost another couple G's. Basically I was putting my money where my mouth was, I didn't want to be afraid, I didn't want to pinch pennies because I knew that where I wanted to be, $6,000 should be a daily occurrence. So I stopped caring about money because I was starting to see how fast it comes and goes. I remember one specific occurrence where I literally had $1,000 come in and out of my bank account in under 15 minutes. I made a $1,000 commission from Regiment Co. and then right after I bought the $1,000 consultation. That literally messed with my head so much when I saw how fast money can move. I decided I would be much happier blowing my money trying to succeed than saving it and staying stagnant. In just two months I gained another 100,000 subscribers. It almost seemed like this challenge was going to work. I literally felt so confident at this point, but I knew I was still behind schedule. March was also another crazy month where we gained over 50,000 subscribers. I mixed in another self-improvement video called The Secret to Achieving Your Dreams, but it didn't really resonate with you guys, so I tried to double down on what worked. 30 Days of Neck Training was a very fun video to create and it honestly made me better at fighting so it was a win-win. And I also had the pleasure of attracting a large Islamic audience by making a useful video for Ramadan and how to work out during it. That was also really cool to be part of and the feedback was amazing. We ended it off with a weightlifting video aimed towards newbies in the gym, but little did I know that video was the start of my downfall. You see, when growing a YouTube channel, the most important thing is having ideas your audience wants to watch. I had a couple do well here and there, but I literally couldn't figure out what you guys wanted to see. And it's my fault for not being able to take a hint. I would upload a video and it would get 1 million views and then the next video would get 20,000 views. This started messing with my head and my consistency. I started getting worried if I could pull this challenge off or not. But that wasn't the only thing that was destroying me mentally. This was probably the most pivotal moment of the year for me because some things happened that just can't be considered coincidences. Let's talk about Young LA. Young LA is quite literally the leading fitness brand at the moment. Every influencer and their mom wants a sponsorship from them. They are successful, their clothes are cool. I also wanted to be sponsored. I had been DMing them since March 2022. 
My TikTok was going up at that time and gaining traction and I wanted to get sponsored really bad. I tried DMing them multiple times to no avail. That's when I started getting around their athletes. I was hoping they could get me connected so I tried to position myself around the right people. I had multiple athletes put in a recommendation for me. Several times. They knew who I was. I had the numbers, I had the community, so I was starting to get bothered when I saw them sponsoring people with half my audience size. You might be wondering, Ski, you sound so arrogant bro, why do you care so much about them sponsoring you? It's just a free t-shirt bro, chill. One word, money. I needed more money to do bigger things on my channel and what do we know about young LA athletes? They make a lot of money. Why? Because young LA sells itself. They have cool clothes. People are going to buy their stuff anyways, so of course they will use your code for an extra discount. This was literally the easiest way for me to raise my income and use the money to make bigger and better videos. Now you might be thinking, well Ski, why can't you make money without them? Skill issue. I'm not good at building landing pages, email marketing, and doing all that cool stuff because I haven't invested the time to learn it. Could I have learned? Yes, but I was solely focused on making better videos. I did not want to divert my focus. When I zero in on one thing, I do it very well. That's why I wanted an easier alternative to making more money. Now where does all this come together and why am I telling you? Regiment Co. I had been sponsored by this jewelry company since October. I started off alright, but I really started making fat sales for them from December to March. The owner of the company and I spoke several times on the phone because he was such a nice guy he would personally call me to thank me for my help and let me know how well I was doing. And by the way, I'm not talking about Giordani. There's another guy whose name I won't say but pretty much these were the tears that he personally told me on the phone. Their top affiliates were Giordani and Sush, of course. But right below that, I was neck and neck with James English. It's a small company but I was still shitting on everyone else's numbers. I proved that I could sell, so what was the reason Young LA was ignoring me? It had to be deeper. Then, one day, since the owner of Regiment is actually friends with the owner of Young LA, he asked me on the phone, Hey bro, Young LA never hit you up? Alright, don't worry, I will get you on. Five minutes later, I literally got a DM from Young LA. The crazy thing is, that DM was sent to me exactly one year later from the first time I ever DM'd them. Same exact day. Now I almost shit myself because it finally felt like everything was coming together. And what are the odds it was exactly one year later? Crazy synchronicity to be honest. So anyways, they finally sponsored me and- <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I wish I could say that. They pranked me. They ended up leaving me on red a few weeks after and you might be asking, why didn't I follow up? You guys, everything is intentional. When they want to onboard a new athlete, they do it quick. A company that professional doesn't make mistakes like that especially when I had to jump through all these hoops and have the owner's literal childhood best friend ask him to put me on. And I literally spoke to Gary and Sush in person at the Fit Expo earlier in the year. They know who I am. Not many people wear a mask in the middle of a Fit Expo. It's kind of hard to forget. It's all documented on video. I end up finding out later on that there were some personal issues behind the scenes between me and some other people affiliated with these brands. They just don't like me. For example, my man at Regiment Co wanted me to pull up for their photo shoot since I was selling so much for them, but then told me a few days later that I couldn't come and be part of it anymore because the Airbnb had a guest limit. Alright, fair enough, I give him the benefit of the doubt. However, I watched the promo they filled and there were literally more people than there were supposed to be. Like, it sounds like to me that he told the others I was going to be there and someone didn't like that. I wonder why. So shout out to my man at Regiment for actually being a good person, but I took all of this very personally and burned a lot of bridges. I could be wrong, but you guys do the math. I'm gaining traction, I proved I can sell, I'm around all the right people, but for some reason I am the only one around these people not getting sponsored. It almost sounds like there was a personal attack made on my reputation. And it almost sounds like I might have proof of certain individuals causing this. Think about it. If you're an important athlete for a company, guys, it's literally as easy as saying, hey. I don't like this mask guy, he bugged me, and if you sponsor him, I'm gonna leave. Could I be wrong? Sure. But this is also the reason I left Regiment. Respect is very important to me, but I do want to make this clear. I don't have any animosity towards Young LA or anyone affiliated with them. I'm just really sad that it had to be this way. However, it wasn't a completely shit month. We got sponsored by huge supplements in March as well, and I honestly love working with these guys. 
They've been nothing but nice and respectful to me and I appreciate them a lot. They deserve all the success coming their way, whether they choose to keep me or drop me. Now I know this was a huge segue and honestly I didn't even need to include Young LA in my video because they aren't responsible for my inability to hit a million subs. However, this incident did block me from more money which indirectly affected me and it bugged me a lot so I just wanted to keep it real with you guys. You, the viewer, are the only person I have any cares left to give to. You guys are the only people I care about now. So why wouldn't I show you what goes on behind the scenes? I started making huge plans this month for the end of the year. I even got close to a few of my followers like my man Isaiah. He is one of the few people who have supported me since literally day one. I told him once I make more money and my account gets more traction, I would fly to his state and work out with him and his friends for a video. But that plan fell through too because ultimately I ended up failing. After gaining 150,000 combined subscribers in three months, my views started dipping. I decided to keep moving forward. I tried doubling down again on what worked in the past and I went back to Zoo Culture to film a video that included Larry Wheels. I got creative and made a video on how playing drums helped me lose fat and some other informational videos. However, none of these videos were hitting. I started panicking and trying to trend jack, copying the titles and structures of popular YouTubers like Hamza and Iman Godzi. But still, it wasn't working because I was slowly losing myself and becoming like everyone else. I was becoming the same type of person I looked down on. I saw my analytics dip extremely hard this month and my overhead costs to run the channel were 100% of my revenue. However, I didn't stop. I kept reinvesting my money, I bought studio lights, I hired more editors, more thumbnail artists, the list goes on. And I got frustrated because my money was burning in front of my eyes, my audience stopped caring about me, and I was watching myself fail in real time and it was all my fault. After all. I'm the only person to blame for all this. I simply wasn't good enough. In May, I decided I was just lacking in creativity, so I had to go back to my roots and do some more challenges. Maybe that would go viral again. I put out another video on fat loss, since that is my forte, and another video on quitting addictions, which I truly believe to this day is one of my most helpful videos because I talk about how I managed to quit things like vaping, and a lot of you guys resonated with that. Then I got really original. Never done before, I cold approached girls for 30 days with a head cam. Literally nobody has done this and packaged it in a challenge. It took me so long to put this video together and I was so uncomfortable the entire time because to be honest, I absolutely hate cold approaching. I, it doesn't even have a high success rate for me. I prefer other methods. But anyways, I thought this video would blow up and revive my channel. There's no way it doesn't get at least a few million views. I was wrong. Yeah, 100,000 views is good but not good enough for where I needed to be. Now I really started to feel despair. A month's worth of effort into a video for 100,000 views. What was I doing wrong? I was trying to apply everything I was learning, but somewhere in my execution I was messing up. But I couldn't figure it out and I was running out of money, so I couldn't pay someone to tell me what I was doing wrong either. I followed it up with an original series I thought of a year ago, Gym Dates, where we literally go on a dinner date in the gym. Luckily, Snacky Chan was cool enough to be a part of it and shout out to her for being so chill. Her episode of Gym Dates was the only one I ever filmed. You want to know why this series was added to my list of failures? Because I needed three cameras, a table, an empty gym, and a whole lot of other preparations to make it happen, which isn't easy when you don't have a team. On top of that, I needed to consistently find fit girls who were willing to do the video and be on camera, which was another small obstacle. I quickly realized that this series might not be worth it actually, and the video flopped anyway so I decided to not repeat it. And it sucks because I'm sure Snacky Chan probably thinks that I used this video to finesse a date with her because she's the only girl I filmed it with and it's probably created weird vibes when that isn't the case at all. But I don't know, maybe I'm just overthinking it. No matter what I tried, I couldn't figure it out anymore. Since results build confidence, you can imagine my confidence in myself as a creator was withering away faster than a jackrabbit in the middle of August. But at least I had my autistic humor to fall back on, right? I started to get desperate for views since I was so behind schedule at this point. I was at 300,000 subs, but if I was on track, I should have been closer to 500 to 600,000. So what do people do when they get desperate? They start talking shit. I made a video exposing influencers where I pretty much called out the current fitness culture, but I was talking negatively about the same people who were in the position I wished I was in. Like Wes Watson says, you hate on what you gave up on. So I started growing really, really resentful. I started hating everyone. I gave into the negativity. And the funniest thing is that that video still flopped. So even joining the dark side didn't work for me. 
The mentorship I was in gave me the advice of being more personal with my audience, so I made a video talking about my past transformation, which did okay. Not the best, but a step forward. But I didn't know how to follow it up once again, so I tanked back down after. My video, The Smartest Way to Build Muscle, was another algorithm video and performed absolutely terribly, so what did I do? I took a step back from the analytics and I said, I am going to make a video I actually care about. Thus was born 30 Days of Semen Retention. I thoroughly enjoyed filming and editing this video and I believe in the message behind it and also the feedback from you guys was amazing. Again, I got a glimpse of the light at the end of the tunnel, but I was not satisfied still. 100,000 views again when I was shooting for 1 million. Now quick disclaimer, I don't want you guys to think I'm complaining about only getting 100,000 views. I know I'm going to get some hate comments saying I'm unappreciative and all this stuff from some geniuses. So let me fix your perspective. In order to achieve the massive goal I set, I was behind schedule. That's why I wasn't satisfied, because I saw my impending doom, not because I don't appreciate every single one of you guys. If there was no challenge, I would have had different emotions about it, but I knew I wasn't measuring up still. At this point, I was praying to God for a miracle, but he wasn't listening because I was being a hypocrite behind the scenes, so why would he bless me when I'm being a DJ? June was a small step forward again as we gained 30,000 subs. I decided to kick off this American month with a tough fitness challenge. Again, to no avail, most of you guys didn't watch that one, and I don't blame you because although it's funny, it isn't that good of an idea. My most viral video, 5 tips to get shredded by summer, inspired the next one, 5 tips to get shredded during summer, however, 2 separate outcomes. That one flopped extremely hard. Next, ultimate guide to body transformation. 10 out of 10 on my analytics and it did terrible, so again, I decided to do something I cared about, which was mess around with peptides since I have a lot of chronic pain as well. I really, really thought this video would bang since I was literally injecting myself multiple times per day with foreign liquids. Not only did the peptides not help my pain, but the video didn't perform either. That was the last straw for me. Mentally, I was not there anymore. I didn't have the perspicacity or indefatigability to keep going. I quite literally felt defeated, and this is where mentally I quit the challenge, until I met John Zerka and his manager. Now I know you guys know him as the chaotic controversial sicko who always talks about 16 year old girls and all that crazy stuff, but that is all for the cameras. I am not endorsing him or the crazy shit he says, but I am saying that he is actually a good guy. I literally have nothing left to lose at this point and I'm already hated by a lot of people so I could care less if you guys agree with my take. I sat in an Airbnb with Zerka and his manager and these guys literally spoke the life back into me. They reignited my motivation for the challenge, they saw my potential, they said screw the challenge, you're still the man bro, keep your head up and keep going. That was an act of kindness that I can't forget because when I needed someone, they were there. And they told me everything I needed to hear in that moment. You can hate Zerka and the people around him all you want. But man, this guy and his manager helped me mentally. I'll be honest, Zerka is a huge headache to be around, but I respect any man that is willing to lift up others when they're down. Not only that, but we filmed a collab at Zoo Culture, and it was the most fun I had filming in a while. Go back and watch the video and you'll see how much I was laughing the whole time. And it helped boost my account a bit since he was trending really hard at the time. So shout out to Zerka and his manager, who I didn't name on purpose because he likes to stay low-key. I followed up the Zerka video with another challenge about how I'm never cutting again and I was ready to be a big boy. I decided it wasn't worth it to stay lean and I was leaving a lot of gains on the table, so I started lean bulking. Remember that Mr. Beast challenge I was doing on TikTok? Yeah, add that to the list of failures too. After 250 days, I concluded it because honestly I decided it was a stupid challenge and I needed to move on. So I paid my respects to him and I started a lean bulking series instead. Things were looking up even though we were only around 350,000 subs. I was hopeful, but I'm sure you know where this is headed because everything I do goes wrong for some reason, so guess what happened? I had to quit the bulk like a few months into it because my chronic pain was too much to handle. I couldn't move weight without my knees, elbows, and lower back hurting. Add that to the list of failures yet again. I took a hiatus for another month until October because I didn't know where to go anymore. I felt like every challenge I started, I quit, and I had lost all credibility in your guys' eyes. I decided to just make videos about subjects I liked, so I uploaded about how we actually look better than we think we do, and how body dysmorphia is curable, and another video on genetics. These did okay, but by this time I pretty much accepted I wasn't going to reach the challenge. 
that wasn't an excuse to stop uploading though so I continued to upload even though I knew I was going out. It's kind of like how Jesus knew he was going to be crucified but kept preaching anyways. Now I'm not comparing myself to Jesus at all but I couldn't think of another analogy so my apologies. I uploaded another terribly performing video on how to do pull ups and this is where I started to realize I don't really understand my audience at all. I literally had no idea and still have no idea what kind of content to make for you guys anymore. So I started feeling kind of indifferent at this point. But then, it's grit official. This guy gained 50,000 subs in a single day with his method of doing one push up for every thousand subscribers he had on YouTube. This guy is super dope and he gave me a great idea so I tried to tweak it and make it a little bit better. I would also do one rep for every thousand subscribers but of five different exercises. And I was starting at a high number already, 370,000. I literally had no idea what I was getting myself into. I tried to keep up with this challenge, but had to quit yet another challenge after only 13 days. And some of you guys thought it was stupid from the get go anyways, and didn't like me doing a challenge purely for subscriber gain. So not only did I not gain subs, but I flared up my biceps tendonitis and knee pain from the thousands of reps I was doing daily. I know it probably sounds to you guys like I have a lot of excuses, but unless you've had these issues, it will be a little difficult for you to see where I'm coming from. These are real things that I deal with constantly. My body hurts all the time from this shit. I wish it was just me being a little girl about it, and sometimes I like to think it is, but that's not the case. However, I am thankful that I have all my arms and legs and I'm pretty healthy still, so don't get it twisted. I just wish I had the capabilities to be a freak athlete like a lot of these other influencers. Now like I said before, me failing the challenge wasn't an excuse to be inconsistent. With less than a thousand dollars to my name, and no editors or other team members remaining at this point, I decided to just go solo and make everything myself. I uploaded 9 videos this month, which was the most I've ever uploaded in a single month. However, some of you guys noticed a severe drop in video quality from July up until now, and that's because... I stopped paying people $300 per video for insane dopamine inducing edits and I just edited myself. It was pretty obvious. I started making my own thumbnails again and to be honest, even though in the end it's just me with my skill set and nobody else helping, I started enjoying being a creator again. I outsourced literally every single task when the money was rolling in, but it all disappeared because I didn't get an ROI which was my own fault for not having better ideas. It sounds sad, but I fully accepted that I would be making this video and did my best to just look towards the future. I had gotten fat again, so I decided to go back to my roots and start another shredding challenge. I was starting to feel like myself again. Everything was coming full circle. I dropped my negative habits and started becoming the man I know I should be. I only uploaded one video in December and it was a video I really had fun filming, however I didn't upload again because I decided I knew where I was going to end up anyways and I wanted to spend a little bit more time making this video as thorough as possible that you're watching right now because it is a pretty important video to me. I also stopped uploading every single day for the new shredding challenge, not because I got fat again but because it just felt really repetitive and we all know where this is heading. We've now gone through every single month of this year. And here we are guys, the end of the year, the last day of the year. And to be honest, I daydreamed about this day a lot, right? I actually thought what would end up be happening this time of the year was I'd be going live at home on my PC, celebrating the million subs with you guys. And I saw it multiple times as I daydreamed throughout the year, that exact vision, but it just didn't come to fruition. And here we are. I actually failed multiple times this year, as you can see, not just on the 1 million challenge, not just on hitting a million subs, I had multiple endeavors throughout the year that failed, like the leg challenge, the Mr. Beast challenge, and not even just Eskimo's duets. Uh, this isn't my first time around starting a social media account. This is just the first one that kind of clicked, right? I've started multiple accounts with my face and without in several niches before, during, and I guess after Eskimo's duets, and they all have failed. There's a humongous rap sheet of failures that I have. They are so substantial that I pretty much don't have any successes to match. The ratio is super off. I have millions of failures and maybe a few, a handful of successes, and that's the reality of life. But if I have anything to say about that, I'm gonna be very objective here, and I think the main reason I didn't reach this goal is because I personally have not become an individual worthy of such a milestone. That is what I personally believe. I don't think God blessed me with this milestone because I didn't become the guy I was supposed to be that is worthy of achieving a million subscribers, right? There were a lot of things I said I would do this year that I just didn't stick to. 
you know, for whatever reason. And so I didn't become the guy that was supposed to hit the goal. That's why it didn't happen. I learned a pretty important lesson, which is sometimes in life you will work hard, but that doesn't always mean you're gonna succeed. I feel like this doesn't get covered enough on social media. Everyone makes it sound like as long as you work hard, you will get to your goal. And probably in the long run, you know, eventually you will hit it, but there are times you're gonna fail and you have to be anticipating them. You have to be ready. It's gonna happen to you, especially as a young man trying to make a name for yourself. At this point, my account is pretty much dead. You know, barely any of you guys click on my videos anymore and it's fine, I'm the only one to blame. So to probably the 5,000 of you who are gonna watch up to this far, uh, I just wanna say thank you because you guys are the real supporters. You guys are the actual ones that care about me. Thank you for coming along this journey with me. And it's been, you know, a pretty long year filled with a lot of ups, but mostly downs, hold the syndrome. So, you know, I, I want you guys to know I really appreciate you. Now, I know this is starting to sound like some super cringe sob story. I don't want that to be the tone of this video. Woe is me, I'm a victim. This is not the tone I want. So let me shift the vibe a little bit. Let's talk about failure. So what do we do on this channel? We lift weights, we get big. How do you build muscle? by failing. How do you build muscle? Train to failure, right? Progressive overload, train to failure. Push your muscle past a certain point so it can grow. So it's literally evident in nature, in our own physiology, that you have to push past failure to grow. This is just one of those moments in my life where I'm going to be forced to push past another failure in order to grow as a person. You have to fail. You literally have to fail multiple times. Every time you go in the gym, you have to fail. Otherwise, you're not going to get bigger. So that means the objective in life should be to fail as much and as quickly as possible so you can finally get to where you're trying to go. It's part of the process, and I don't know why a lot of people make it sound like if you fail, you're a loser. Because honestly, it's just adding to your character art. Nobody wants to hear a story about a guy who everything he tried just went perfectly. It's not that interesting. I personally wouldn't listen to a podcast like that. You have to have the trials and tribulations and go through the fire. Here is the thing about failure that's really interesting, right? The reason a lot of people will prey on your downfall and they want to see you fail is because you failing allows them to justify the risks they didn't take. That's the reality of it, okay? Anytime somebody is condescending or negative towards you, they're not, they don't build you up if you fail, right? They're not there for you or they say negative shit. It's because they never really wanted you to succeed. You failing justifies them and gives them a little bit of dopamine to say, ah, see, I'm glad I didn't take the same risk as him. It clearly doesn't work, right? The point is, I'm glad that I got to publicly share my failures with you guys because you know, for some reason, there's a lot of people out there who are scared to try because of failure. And the only reason they're scared to fail is because of what people will say, right? That's the main reason people don't take risks. It's they don't want to go through the embarrassment of what others will have to say, which is the position I'm in right now. Oh no, will the other influencers I networked with think I'm a failure now? Will my fans think I'm a failure? Here's the thing about embarrassment. You can just willingly choose to not feel it anymore. It's God. So, that will allow you to shorten the curve to success. If you just stop giving a shit, sure you might end up in this position where you did fail and it's public and everyone can see it. And now you're quote unquote laughing stock, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. It's all pointless. Only thing that matters is how you personally feel about yourself. Are you proud of yourself? Are you proud of what you're doing or what you've become? If that answer is no, then you've got a lot to work on. As long as you care about who you're becoming, Everything else is just noise, right? Show the sunset. That shit looks sick. The gates of heaven are calling and Ski will be dining in Valhalla. I will be there. I'm going. Are you? I hope the main effect of this video is that somebody sees it and decides, wow, maybe embarrassment is really not that bad. And uh, maybe it's really not that bad to fail and uh, people blow it out of proportion all the time. And as long as you're still alive, it's okay. Unless you die, it's not over. So now, do I look stupid? Probably. Do I look publicly embarrassed? Maybe. Did I come out of the gate swinging, talking a bunch of shit on podcasts and on videos saying, I'm gonna hit a million subs, get all the eyes on me? Yes. Do I look stupid now in the end for not achieving the goal? Probably. Does it matter? No. Was I undoubtedly extremely prideful and cocky in the beginning of this? Yes, as you should be if you're a man right? Because no one's going to believe in you. Not even your own friends. There's always going to be some subconscious doubt in their mind too. I don't even know if Ski can do like I'm his friend. I'll support him, but I don't even know if this is possible. Everyone will shit on you. If your goal is big enough, that's part of the game. If you're never afraid to look stupid in the end, you will be the only one that looks smart. Now, here's the thing. I don't want anyone to think that this video, like I said earlier, the tone is I'm blaming people. I'm blaming circumstances and uh, you know, 
everything was, you know, it happened to me and it, I could have avoided all the, cause that's not the case, right? I take full responsibility for not hitting the million subs because this is how the metaphor of life works. You have to get in the water knowing the waves are coming. Now they're gonna eventually turn you over and somersault you. You can get out of the water and be a punk and say, that's it, I'll just never learn how to surf. Or you can keep drowning until you finally figure out how to stand on your board. And ride that shit to the shore. Valhalla, look at it. Ragnar, Lothbro. All right, bring it back to see. <laughs> Thank you. Here's the real truth. The truth is I shouldn't have made such a stupid challenge, right? It didn't come from a place of motivation and encouragement. It came from a place of pride and ego, and I think that's part of the reason I didn't hit it. Uh, the original reason I made the challenge was, I don't even want to say it on camera, but it was not a good reason, right? That's ultimately why things failed, because if you don't have a good reason why you're doing something, then it won't be enough to push you when things get tough. And so if it all boils down to you and your personal pride, it's not gonna be enough. It's really funny how life works because the more I actually focused on analytics and views, the less I got them, right? The more I tried to double down and spend more money on my channel, the more money I lost because I stopped looking at it from a creative pursuit, making it good, and more so just analytical. I became a statistic analysis guy, right? What do the YouTube analytics say today? Whoa, two out of 10 video. How do we double down on click-through rate? <laughs> Fuck you. I spent all my money this year, right? Reinvesting it back into my videos. If you're watching this, I guarantee you have more money than me. I have less than a thousand dollars in my bank account now because of my own miscalculations. There are a huge list of things I did wrong this year, but like I said, that's part of the process. The best thing you can do in this situation is learn from it, not make the same mistake twice because then you're a fool, okay? That's part of the game and I'm still happy at the end of the year because at least I can say I have at least tried. I have actually failed. I have more failures than people have even attempted things in their life, right? So that's why it's really not a big deal. Trial by fire, you have to jump in the water and eventually learn how to swim. It's the only thing that's really disheartening about this is that, you know, the worst thing in the world is not failing. It's just letting people down who counted on you. And I had a lot of people counting on me this year. And uh, that's the only time it really hurts. But at the end of the day, you are the author of your own life story. So make it a good one and do it with class. So if you're watching this and you're like, huh, I don't know how to feel about this video. I want to just leave you with this. Okay. That's one of my closing thoughts. The main message is no matter what happens to you in life. Okay. Always keep your chest. Fuck. <laughs> This is the main message. Always keep your chest up and your chin up, okay? Don't let anyone take your confidence away. Don't let anyone make you feel bad, okay? Don't get embarrassed by what other people say. Even if you fail, even if you end up like Ski at the end of the year and you made a huge, I'm gonna do this, a huge commotion, watch everyone look at me and you didn't do it. Who gives a shit? Keep moving forward. That's the only thing you can really do. As long as you're still alive and you're still breathing, you'll still be kicking. So, like I said, chest up, chin up. Always remember, you're the man. Okay, because your own confidence is the only thing you have to carry with yourself throughout this life. And the crazy thing is, even if you fail, you will still be further and happier that you took a step forward than if you never did anything at all. So, <sighs> stagnation is death. No matter what happens, always try to be progressing in some aspect. Don't be afraid to fail because that shit is exaggerated on literally all avenues of life. Everyone makes it sound like failure is super bad. If you're not a million dollars in debt and your entire family didn't die of some fucking illness, you're good. The part you've all, the part you've all clicked for, I'm sure you're wondering, am I gonna delete my channel? I said I would, so I should, right? Wrong. So I'm actually not going to delete my channel. Some of you, a small portion, are cheering right now at the computer. The rest of you are typing a hate comment. Before you type it, I want you to know I don't give a shit about your opinion. I'm keeping it for the small amount of people that actually didn't want me to keep my uh, to delete my channel. Like I was really going to do it, and I had plans to around September. I was getting ready to, you know, get rid of the channel. I was going to delete it, and a lot of people talked me out of it. Fellow creators, real followers who leave comments regularly, and they said, "Ski, please, bro, you helped me a lot." So. I'm not gonna delete the channel. I'm gonna leave it up. However, here's the caveat. I'm not going to upload anymore. So technically it's not a clickbait title. Uh, I don't know what the next video is that I will make. I don't know when it will be or if there even will be a next video. Mainly because my channel is kind of dead at this point. I don't know what to do to revive it. I don't even know what videos to make. 
And I don't want people to say, ah, this guy is so privileged, bro. He's in a spot of a creator and uh, he's taking it for granted. Well, that's not the case at all. The reason people say that is they think you're privileged as a creator if you're making money. I got a question before you dumbasses, before you comment that. Would you take this job as a creator, right? To make videos for a living? If it meant you don't make money from it. You still have to work full time. You just get the creative pursuit and you get views. All you get is the views, zero money involved. Everyone watching this would say no. If you say yes, you're a fucking liar. That's why people say this is a creative thing. So since I'm not making money from it, I am a grown man at the end of the day. I need a livelihood. I have to support myself and others, right? I have to go make money, guys. At the end of the day, at least I will be honest with you about it, that it is primarily about money, right? It's great to inspire people and I don't wanna take that for granted. And I like doing both, doing that and making a living off it. But at this point, I'm not making a living because I'm not selling eBooks. My views are low. Nothing is generating income for me. So I have to go figure it out. So I won't be back until I've figured it out the good news is that means I won't be making videos for the sole purpose of money. If there is another video on this channel, it'll be fire because I won't be doing it for money anymore. So if that bugs you, please let me know in the comments below why you hate me and then share the video with someone else who might also share their hateful opinion in the comments so that it starts to chain so that you can make the video go viral. So please leave your thoughts in the comments, guys. I don't know when I'll be back. I'll be honest, guys. Uh, you know, it's been a really, really fun year and I am glad for what we built, the whole ski mask thing. But, you know, I'd be lying if I said some, like if I didn't say I resented it sometimes because unfortunately the image I've created for myself as the ski mask guy is, you know, kind of this goofy entertaining character. So it's kind of really hard for me to build a brand that's not solely based on entertainment and to have people take me seriously because everyone just sees me as the goofy mask guy, which is not even, you know, somebody I really wanted to become kind of tired of just being the jester so that's another reason why i don't really want to make videos anymore so i don't know when i'll be back i want to leave you guys with this quote that really speaks to me i hope it speaks to you which is basically in life we will regret more the risks we didn't take than the goals we didn't achieve so whatever it is you feel like doing you have to you have to try it at least bare minimum Put some effort into it starting today you don't need to wait till new year's you don't need to wait till a certain till your birthday i'm gonna stop smoking after next week i'm gonna stop doing this whatever it is you want to achieve you will regret it way more if you don't try and you will literally see people achieve what you wanted to even if you fail at the end of the day don't let it take your confidence away who gives a shit? if you're still breathing move forward at the end of the day that's all you can do so with that being said yeah this is ski mask duet signing off for quite possibly the last time ever so let's create and continue creating the best versions of ourselves to give to the world. Peace. Yeah! You hear that echo? It's actually pretty sick. Ethnicity reveal, I'm Samoan.